My name is Laura Gigliotti. I'm a master's student at Penn State and my research is dealing with snowshoe hare habitat use, movement, and survival in Pennsylvania. So this is the first year of a two-year study and the ultimate goal of this project is to learn more about the dynamics of snowshoe hares in the state. There hasn't really been a lot of research done about the hares in Pennsylvania. A lot of our information on snowshoe hares comes from Canada or northern areas where the dynamics of the populations are slightly different than what we expect to find here. So we're really hoping to find out where the hares are spending their time and where the hares are surviving the best and doing the best. So then in the future, the Game Commission can adapt their management plans in order to create habitats that will sustain the snowshoe hare populations. So we have two different study areas. One is in the northeast part of the state in Monroe County, and the other study area is in the northwest part of the state, and that's in Warren County. And these two study areas were selected to give us a broader range of snowshoe hares across the state, and also because previous research suggests that these two areas have higher abundances of snowshoe hares as opposed to other areas of the state. Snowshoe hares are pretty widely distributed across the northern latitudes of North America, the boreal forests of Canada, and down into Maine. The snowshoe hares also come down across high elevation areas of the Appalachian Mountains and Rocky Mountains. So historically, the hare, snowshoe hare population was pretty widely distributed. They were limited to northern areas of the state uh, across suitable habitat, also along high elevation areas, areas that have the longest duration of snow cover. And the reason that they're limited to high elevation areas is because their color in winter is white. So when they're in mismatch, when they're white against the brown background, the predation rates are higher. So I have uh, 80 traps, currently 60 of them are deployed. We've had between 50 and 70 traps deployed at one time. Uh, the traps are spread out all over. They're in clusters of 10 at each site. And the sites are places that we've gone and scouted out, looked for signs of snowshoe hares, including scat and tracks when there's snow. On a day-to-day -day basis, usually on Mondays I'll go in and I'll set all the traps, bait them with alfalfa and apples. Um, the next few days of the week, we go and check the traps early in the morning. So after we check the traps, I'll use uh, radio telemetry to locate the hairs that we have already collared. There are some studies that they have close to 80 to 95 percent death due to predation. We kind of expected the same, but at the same time, no one really knows much about the Pennsylvania snowshoe hairs, so it could be completely different. Once the days start to get a certain length, um, it triggers a hormonal shift within the hair. So it will start growing its brown coat and eventually it will lose its white coat over that. So as soon as I see a hair in a trap, the first thing I do is I'll take a picture of it because we want to document the color change in the fur. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll coax it into a, a bag. We'll kind of open up the trap and we'll scare it into the bag and then we'll weigh it. 1.87 kilograms. And we'll take the right hind foot measurement using a special kind of ruler. Uh, next, we'll get a pit tag ready, which just goes just under the skin behind the right shoulder. Um, we also have been ear tagging him. And once all that's complete, we'll put a radio collar on and send him on his way. Starting last month, we started deploying our GPS collars, and these collars are able to collect data on the hair's locations every 20 minutes. Um, so we're able to get data throughout the day, and we'll be able to look at night first day locations and over the course of the season if their movements or habitat use changes. Um, the issue with that is that we need to actually get the collar back in order to download the data. 
We're at the field site where Laura Gigliotti just finished up her master's project. She had three snowshoe hairs yet with GPS collars on them at the end of her study. And we're out here trying to retrieve those collars because they still have a lot of valuable habitat use information on them. She found that snowshoe hares have similarities with snowshoe hares in more northern populations. They select their habitat with similar criteria. They depend on these highly dense woody vegetated areas. Snowshoe hares in Pennsylvania were found to be larger than snowshoe hares in northern populations, which is the opposite of what we would expect. She found that their coats were less dense than populations in the north, which makes sense because they have, in general, warmer winter conditions. But this has a direct impact on how white the snowshoe hares in Pennsylvania are. There was a great deal of variability within the pelts of these snowshoe hares that she was capturing. Some snowshoe hares were partially brown. Some snowshoe hares had a brown eye ring. Of all the snowshoe hares that she captured during her study, she in fact caught three snowshoe hares in winter that were almost completely brown, which has not been documented in Pennsylvania before. So we have snowshoe hares that in general are similar to populations that are further to the north, but we also have snowshoe hares that are very different than those northern populations. Yeah, it seems like they're preferring areas where there's a mixture of spruce trees and then really dense scrub oak. And so where that line is, that's where I've been putting a lot of my traps, A, because it's a lot easier to get in there, and B, because we've had a lot more success in those areas. Um, there's also been an area that's pretty swampy with a lot of scrub oak, and they seem to prefer that area. But no matter where we put the traps, uh, there's spruce nearby. And we've had some great success at getting a better idea of the distribution of snowshoe hares in the state. We have these strongholds in the northeast and the northwest regions. I think this is a new guy. But we also have found snowshoe hares along the Ridge and Valley regions in the Laurel Highlands as well. So we're finding hares further south than we thought that we still had them. The more that we understand about where we have snowshoe hares, the better we can direct our habitat management practices.